Welcome to Salad with a Side of Fries. I'm your host, Jen Trepic, talking wellness and weight loss for real life. We're here to clear up the myths, misinformation, bad science, and marketing to teach you how to eat and how to cheat. Are you ready? I'm having salad with a side of fries. This week, we're talking about pumpkin. So last year around this time, we talked about pumpkin seeds. (laughs) And um, amidst my not so mild obsession with butternut squash. I was like, let's talk about another squash, pumpkin, right? So like I said, pumpkin's a squash, a winter squash. It's actually in the same plant family as cucumbers and melons. So yes, it is technically a fruit because of the seeds. But nutritionally speaking, it's more like a vegetable. And we tend to use it more like a vegetable. Another fun fact, because I'm full of useless information, So they're native to North America, but grown on every continent except Antarctica. I know. Interesting, right? And um, there are more varieties than most of us, I think, realize. You know, we think of the ones that we like carve or decorate for Halloween. The ones, the pumpkins that we use for food look more like a butternut squash in terms of like size and shape. You'll probably see them labeled in your grocery store as pie pumpkins. So I don't recommend trying to eat your jack-o'-lantern, like not only because, you know, you don't want to eat something that's been mutilated and then sitting out, but also like the texture and the flavor are not the same. So just a little quick note of caution on that one. Don't eat the jack-o'-lantern. Okay. So to the nutrition side of pumpkins, I want to point something out. So we're going to start with cooked, boiled, or drained pumpkin without salt. So one cup, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, we get 1.76 grams of protein, 2.7 grams of fiber, 49 calories, 0.17 grams of fat, no cholesterol, 12 grams of carbs. Where it gets more interesting to me is that the vast majority of the pumpkin sold in the U.S. is not fresh pumpkin, but canned pumpkin, and the nutrition facts are really different. So one cup of canned pumpkin has 137 calories, 3 grams of protein, 7 grams of fat, 7 grams of fiber, 19 grams of carbs. So before we get into... I know your face, you're like, oh, (laughs) yeah. Before we get into the micronutrients, I think the bottom line here, like we always say, read the labels, see what's being added to that canned pumpkin. You know, overall, pumpkin is fairly low in calories, low in fat, low in sugar, low in protein, higher in fiber, Right. And the other carbs are really coming from the sugars and the starch that are in the squash, unless you're seeing something being added to that canned pumpkin. But I feel like that sort of covers the macronutrient piece, (laughs) right? Macronutrients, the ones we want in large quantities. The micronutrients, right? The vitamins and minerals, the things that we need in smaller quantities. Pumpkin gives us a lot of vitamin A right? Mostly like beta carotene and alpha carotene, right? We think about that color of the pumpkin. Yeah, exactly. Gives us a good amount of vitamin K, copper, vitamin E, iron, and then a bit of magnesium, riboflavin, vitamin B6, vitamin C, and potassium. So there are some others that are, you know, less significant, I would say. But looking at this as a whole, macro micronutrients, right? The most benefit is coming from the fiber and those vitamins and minerals. So when we translate this into health benefits, it it sort of goes to almost like what we were talking about this week with the documentaries, because there really isn't research or that much research on specific foods, right? Rather, we see research on sort of the vitamins or the minerals. And it's really, you know, it's expensive. There isn't a lot of money to be made in studying a single food. (laughs) So what we do in these cases is we look at the research on those vitamins and minerals that are offered by pumpkin, right, in more significant amounts. And then we can sort of track the logic to say, well, if the nutrients from this food 
offer these benefits, then it tracks that we might be able to get some of these benefits from this food, right? So focusing on metabolic health, because that's really where, you know, our emphasis here at Salad with a Side of Fries. So metabolic health, we know fiber plays a key role in that, right? Beta carotene also supports metabolic health. And then vitamin A, which, like we said, is coming from that beta carotene and alpha carotene in the pumpkin. There's often, in a lot of the research, there's a connection between the vitamin A and our immune system. So it can potentially help our body fight infection. We also talk about all the time the connection between our gut and our immune system. We're actually going to talk more about that next week, too. But there's research showing that vitamin A strengthens the intestinal lining, which can help it make us more resistant to infection. And I think we've all heard it before, right? Beta carotene for eye health. And what it does is that the beta carotene helps our retina absorb light. So that has to do with like vision sharpness. So there was also vitamin C, right? I call vitamin C nature's antihistamine, right? Many of us have heard all about vitamin C in the immune system. So yes, it supports our immune cells. So again, connecting to our immune system there. Also connected to vitamin C and some of the minerals with eye health, there's specific research around macular degeneration. So there was a study showing that people with age-related macular degeneration were able to slow the progression by supplementing with zinc, vitamin C, vitamin E, beta carotene, or a combination of these. And pumpkin happens to have all of those. Although having said that, right, the pumpkin's going to have smaller quantities of those things than a supplement. But it's interesting, right? A little bit here and there, we can add it in. Again, connected to vitamin C, vitamin E, and beta carotene, we talk about skin health, right? We know those to be antioxidants. We've talked about that many times before. So they can help protect our skin from the sun. And foods in research, foods high in beta carotene may also improve skin's appearance and texture, which is why we also see them used as ingredients in a lot of skincare products. I would eat the pumpkin. Like I know a lot of times people are like, oh, well, I'll make my own mask. I don't know that you want to make your own pumpkin mask, but I like the ingredient situation happening and what it could mean for our skin. I'm glad you're laughing. I feel like we're... <laughs> All right. Connected to the potassium in pumpkin, we connect that to cardiovascular health. So potassium may reduce high blood pressure levels. Of course, we always talk about fiber, right? Fiber can help lower cholesterol because it basically the fiber binds to cholesterol in foods that you eat. So it prevents it from like absorbing and just going into your blood. I think, you know, more or less, adding a little pumpkin into our lives might be a good idea. Having said that, it doesn't have to be pumpkin pie or pumpkin muffins or pumpkin spice latte, <laughs> right? I'm going to come back to that in a second. You can actually use pumpkin in soups and stews. You can mix canned pumpkin either with, you know, some kind of broth or even coconut milk. Like when you mix it with coconut milk, a lot of people use that as the base for a curry. Or if you just mix it with, you know, a vegetable stock, you can end up with, you know, any kind of soup. You could switch up your chili. So maybe replace the beans or some of the beans with pumpkin in a chili. I'm also, like I've mentioned, like I have an obsession with butternut squash. So you can really use pumpkin in all the same ways and just same ingredients, same recipe, just switch it out. So like roast it or even mix it with plain Greek yogurt and some seasonings and then you have a veggie dip, right? Get creative, right? <laughs> um, if you're using canned pumpkin, like I mentioned before, just read the label. Right. If you have fresh, remember that you can use every bit of it, the stems, the seeds, all the pieces. And finally, I have to come back to the pumpkin spice latte and our pumpkin flavored foods because they are everywhere this time of year. And just like we've talked about in this episode and every episode, they are not inherently offering you health benefits of pumpkin because they're called pumpkin something. <laughs> right. A lot of them don't actually have any pumpkin in them. And you know, adding insult to injury there in our pumpkin conversation, they're often just filled with added sugar and flavorings and things that really are not serving our health. So I always say this, right? Make the choices that work for you. Just make those choices coming from a place of education and information so that it is, in fact, actually a choice 
And you know that going back to that intention conversation. And, you know, if you see a little pumpkin in your grocery store or canned pumpkin displayed, maybe give it a shot. See how creative you can get. All right, Kathy, any questions or anything to add? Gosh, I don't know. I would throw some pumpkin in a smoothie, make like a pumpkin spice smoothie. And I love the idea of roasting it. You know, you could ro- get small, those small pie pumpkins, cut them in half and fill them like you would an acorn squash or a butternut squash. So there's so many cool things that you can do. And we actually do have a pumpkin soup in one of our cookbooks that we use canned nice. pumpkin. So full awesome. circle here. Seriously. And now I'm super hungry. So, <laughs> well, thank you again, Kathy. Just appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for having me. This is such a great conversation. And I look forward to connecting with all of you viewers as well. Absolutely. So as always, everybody, I'm your host, Jen Trepic. Connect with me on Instagram or really all social media. I'm at Jen Trepic, J-E-N-N-T-R-E-P-E-C-K. Send me a message. I'd love to hear your key takeaways, your ideas, what questions you have. This is also the easiest way to learn more about working with me as your health coach. If you are not already please become a member. We'd love to have you join us. You just go to glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries, or just click the link in the show notes. This supports this podcast, this community, but most importantly, it truly supports your health. You'll get this week's recipe for the Tuscan white bean soup and the giveaway of Kathy's super easy plant-based cookbook. So until next week, remember, vegan, vegetarian, plant forward, it's a spectrum. So if it helps, forget the label, just simply start to experiment and add more veggies to your everyday. Well, friends, that's it for today's episode of Salad with a Side of Fries. Congratulations for making yourself and your health a priority. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to click subscribe or follow on your favorite podcast platform, share us with a friend, and we'll be back next week. Always remember, you deserve it and you are worth it. Happy healthy. Happy healthy.